Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Christopher Sliman. I am a fourth year pre-med student and I'm applying to 21 medical schools. Uh, if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. If you're not, then welcome to my new video. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about five things I wish I knew my pre-med years, knew in my pre-med years. So um, before we start, if you guys would please leave a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and uh, actually leave a comment about what kind of stuff you'd like to see in future videos. I would definitely appreciate any kind of feedback I can get as I am still trying to find my niche in all this, uh, all this content called YouTube. Anyways, let's begin. Hello? All right, let's begin. So number one, the first thing that I wish I knew in my pre-med years was that GPA counts right from the start. A lot of you guys might be thinking, well, no, duh, Chris, of course GPA counts from the start. But I was actually led to believe that medical schools would look at your first year as a transition year. And that, you know, because of like how stuff was different in high school and how stuff is like way harder in college, that it wouldn't really count as much. And of course I was wrong. And, you know, looking back in retrospect, it's like, well, yeah, a 10 second Google search would have told me I was wrong, but I believed it. I slacked off my freshman year too. You know, I thought it kind of like a free pass and I didn't do as well. I remember going to talk to my pre-health advisor and she was like, dude, what are you doing? You got to check yourself before you ruin your future. So it was, it was, uh, it wasn't like so bad, but it was pretty bad. <laughs> um, some things about your GPA, guys, is that it is much easier to change, you know, earlier on. When you don't have too many credit hours, then your GPA will change pretty freaking easily, you know? Like two, three, four semesters, you know, it's still pretty malleable. But after you have, you know, start racking up credit hours, your GPA becomes more rigid and it becomes more set and you're kind of going to know what you're going to graduate with depending that you don't just fail completely all your classes. Um, and because of that, it's important to do well early. And here's my personal advice to uh, pre-meds who are in their freshman year is don't worry about extracurricular activities in your freshman year, okay? Um, you're a freshman, most professors aren't going to trust that you're gonna stick in your major for them to even wanna, you know, do research with you. Um, if that might not be the case for everybody, but for, you know, most of the time, professors are more hesitant and reluctant to start with freshmen, just because it's very common for freshmen to change their majors early on. So focus just entirely on your academics. Do well your freshman year, worry about, you know, starting your extracurriculars, later on. Thing two I wish I knew was that extracurricular activities do matter. They matter, they matter, they matter, they matter. Now some of you guys might be thinking, no, it's okay. It, it kind of is, but what kind is the most important? I'm going to try to list off some things that I see as the most important and that I've seen a lot in my uh, medical school applications. So. Um, one thing that medical school applications talk about a lot is clinical experiences. Uh, clinical experiences can range from shadowing, a, you know, doctor, family care, surgery, OBGYN, any kind of doctor, whatever, um, to working in the field as an EMT, as a nurse, as a nursing assistant, certified nursing assistant. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can get clinical experiences, and there's probably more ways than what I've just listed off too. Um, another big one that I see in a lot of applications is research. Um, you can research through your university, you can research through a third party. Um, typically, what I do is I um, would talk to my professors and see if they do research, but I will get into that at a later point. Okay, uh, volunteering. Volunteering is really important, and it's not just volunteering at the ER. You know, like clinical volunteering is what they or like medical volunteering is what they call it it's important to have that but it's also important to have non-medical volunteering medical schools want to see you as a person they want to see that you do a whole bunch of things so if you are passionate about sports and you spend your time volunteering teaching kids how to play hockey as an example you know then that shows a lot about who you are as a person rather than just seeing someone who did 
all the medical stuff and they don't have anything else you know that doesn't really show medical schools who you are why they should accept you the kind of personality you might have um, another point another extracurricular activity is athletics um, I don't think it's as important as people make it out to be. It's definitely like an important point if you want like a full ride scholarship in your undergraduate years, you know, but um, medical school is a little different, you know, as long as you have something that you're passionate about. So whether that be health and fitness, whether that be music, whether that be science and research, whether that be um, food culinary cooking you know they just want to know that you are you know that you're a person you're not a robot you don't just study all day and sleep all night it's kind of lame um and, and the last extracurricular activity would be jobs uh jobs are very important too and it doesn't just have to be medical jobs you know it could also be non-medical jobs like take me for example i started working at uh, Dillard's full-time. I worked 40 hours a week and I went to school full-time 40 hours a week too. Um, and the reason I did that was because I needed to make money to help support my mother. So, you know, medical schools are not made up of a bunch of, you know, they will understand like, hey, this kid, you know, could have worked as a scribe making, you know, $10 an hour, but he needed to make money to support his mother. So we're, we're chill with it, you know? it actually just shows more about who I am as a person. Anyways, um, the third thing I wish I knew was get to know your professors. Why I say that is you guys are going to need letters of recommendations and you need to make sure that those letters are good letters of recommendations, not just like generic letters that anybody could write, you know? Um, some things that I used to do was I would go to office hours. I would make sure that I wrote down you know, during syllabus day, when they said what their office hours were and where their office were, hours were, I would write that down and I would go, I would ask questions. I would, you know, try to try my best to get to know my professors. I would try to make sure that they knew who I was. Um, I sit up front every day so they could see me too, you know? Um, if you're sitting in the back and dozing off with all the other kids, then you're just gonna be a blur to your professor too, you know? So you need to make an impression. Um, that's why you need to, you know, ask questions, participate, do all of that stuff, make a good letter. Um, and then uh, another good way to get to know your professors is to ask them if they are involved in any research on campus and if they have any openings. That's exactly how I found uh, the research that I did in my undergrad was I asked my professors. I found one who needed um, somebody's help and I was lucky enough to be that somebody and that's how I got in. Um, the fourth thing I wish I knew was how to use Rate My Professor. So if you guys don't know, Rate My Professor is a website that students use to rate their professors on like difficulty, how much homework they get, what's expected, the professor's teaching style. And although I will admit that it's not the most accurate tool in the world, uh, I think it's the best one that is available to, you know, anybody now to use. So, um, you know, sometimes you can, we've all had experiences where we've had tough professors. You know, sometimes professors can be extra. They can be extra hard. They can be extra aggravating. They can be extra annoying. They can be extra time consuming. There's so many, you know, ways that a bad professor can really, really, really just bum you out, you know? Um, by using resources like Rate My Professor, you can see how often students, um, how other students rated them. You can see how, uh, how what students have to say about the course load, about everything. My advice, go for easy A classes. Work smarter, don't work harder. It's enough that pre-med students are already working harder than most other majors out there. We have so much stuff to deal with. We have an MCAT, we have admissions, we have secondaries, interviews, we have all the extracurricular activities going on. I butchered that word, that's okay. That's how passionate I am about this. You don't get this kind of passion on other YouTube videos, guys. <laughs> um, but uh, it's my personal opinion. Why work harder when you can work smarter? You know what I mean? So for example, find a professor that's easier. You know, if you know that genetics is gonna be really, really tough, 
then find a professor and rank my professor who rated the best. Take it with the best professor, with the best professor who will set you up to succeed in that class. You know what I mean? You don't want to be taking it with a first year professor who has no idea what they're doing, no ratings, and you know, they write stupid hard questions because they've never given an exam before. So I always, you know, that's just my personal opinion on that. My last thing, number five, that I wish I knew as a pre-med was to make time for myself. I worked so hard between being a full-time student, between being a part of a club, between working full-time and shadowing and doing volunteering. I was left with no time for myself. And, you know, towards like halfway through my junior year, I was like, I'm going to burn out. If I burn out, then there goes my future. So I needed to take time for myself. I needed to be a little selfish at times and do things that I enjoyed. Things that I enjoyed were, for example, working out. Some things that I enjoyed were going to the movies with my friends, spending time with my friends, finding a girlfriend, living life, being a normal human being. You don't have to just be a robot who studies all day, test, takes his tests, and then comes home and studies all night too. That's no way to live, guys, you know? Um, make friends at, on campus too everybody on campus guys everybody in your major is there for similar reasons everybody who is there wants to get into the field of health and science okay whether they want to be researchers or whether they want to be physicians or nurses they're there because they chose to be there and that is something that you guys can connect with make friends talk to people I would not have done as well as I did in my undergrad if I hadn't made some amazing friends along the way. Um, but that about wraps it up, guys. I have a video coming out next week with one of those friends, actually, and we're going to be doing a leg day together uh, for the other aspect of my channel. And thank you so much for all the support I've been getting. If you guys like this video, then once again, please leave a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, and again, comment what you think I should be talking about in future medical videos. You know, there's a lot that I, there's a lot of experience I have, you know, four years and I'm applying right now. If you guys have questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And if a bunch of people ask similar questions, I'll make a new video on it too. In the meantime, thank you so much. Thank you for making it this far and just as a huge thank you to you guys I want to give you a last piece of free advice before I go to the gym. I'm currently chugging my pre-workout Yes, I just took a sip for the camera. That's okay. Um, so here's the advice I wanted to give you guys take advantage of your free resources guys most universities have uh, free pre-health advisors that will help you along the way from the very beginning you meet up with your pre-health advisor and you guys can start planning about how where you're gonna volunteer who you're gonna shadow how you're gonna study for the MCAT when you're gonna apply how to apply they can do mock interviews for you guys um, help you with what medical schools to apply to guys it's a resource that I did know about in my undergrad, but I knew about it like later. I utilized it mostly my junior year and I wish I started sooner. I wish I met with a pre-health advisor my freshman year so I could know that GPA counts right from the start, okay? Learn from my mistakes. Use your pre-health advisor, guys. They are there for a reason. It's gonna be super, super, super helpful. Um, another bit of advice I wanted to give you is if you feel like you are stressed from your uh, like course load on school, then something that I really recommend is taking summer school. Uh, summer school might be expensive, it's not a free resource, but hear me out. Here's the thing about summer school. Class sizes are gonna be smaller, meaning you get more one-on-one -on -one time with your professor and you're in there longer each day. So that means you're spending more time learning practicing and hammering down that content. If you guys feel stressed out with the amount of course loads you have and you want to meet scholarship requirements or anything, then summer school is the way to go because it still counts for scholarships and you'll learn it. You'll have less classes during your actual school year and I just see it as an absolute win. Anyways, thank you guys for sticking around so long. My arm is hurting and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you on the flip.